Thank you, Lenny. Lenny Kravitz, ladies and gentlemen. There he is. Um, yeah. Hey, you're tuned in on another epic episode of HTLA's Film 101. That's right. You are listening to HTLA Radio 1 New York. And, uh, <clears throat> well, it's it's sort of starting to warm up around here. Yeah, it's a balmy 21 degrees in Central Park right now. Mm-mm. That's nice, and well, let's go play Frisbee. Well, not quite, but, you know, we can we can hope, can't we? Yeah. Anyway, thank you for joining us on HDLA's Film 101, the show that likes to grab your little ears and kick you in the face about how to make a film. Uh, I am the host of Film 101, Christopher John Taylor, and I have 17 years in film and television commercially, uh, as well as hordes of independence and terrible shorts that you'd never ever ever want to see um <clears throat> yes i i made those two um and uh this show uh, is going to be very very exciting today for all you wannabes and and uh people out there who don't think you need film school um i'm going to take you through a couple of helpful tips today <clears throat> we don't have an interview this week we've got an interview lined up next week and uh, an interview lined up the week following with two very prominent uh, film directors working in the biz right now as we speak. And um, we haven't got the actual schedule laid out for who's up first and what's on second and all that good stuff yet. Uh, but as soon as I, I should have that in a couple of days. And as soon as I do have that, of course, I will be putting that out to our Facebook page. You can like us on Facebook. Yes, just look for... Film 101 on Facebook.com and um, follow us at The Film 101 on Twitter uh, and uh, you can stay abreast of all the kicking stuff. You can also hit our website. Uh, we've got a, a nice little website that we've started up for the show over at uh, thefilm101.webs.com. It's temporarily until we, well, we see how the, the show is going to do and see. Uh, See what we might do for a domain. You know, we, we like to keep things funky around here. Don't just like to do something boring like go, I don't know, the, the film 101.com or anything. Yeah. So this week, um, I did make a couple of blog posts this week, uh, some helpful stuff too. You can check that out at the website, of course, the film 101.webs.com. Uh, hit the, uh, the blog link there and fire right through, see what we got going on there. But, um, no, t today I've decided I'm going to kind of give you all out there a, a really good guide to basic filmmaking gear, right? And then I'm going to take you through a basic filmmaking kit, you know? So if you're, if you're looking to get into this as a hobby or if you're looking to get into, into it more of as a business, um, you know, these are some of the kind of pieces of gear that you will need uh, to do something start to finish and have it actually look and sound decent. Well, I shouldn't say look, because that's really up to your DP and your lighting guy, but you know what I mean. So that's what I thought we would do this week. So that's what we're going to do this week. Um, and have I forgotten to mention anything else? I don't think so. I'm, I'm sure they'll kick my butt if, I, if I've forgotten something, but I don't think so. Um, so let's let's look at the Indie Filmmaker's Guide to just basic gear, shall we? When beginning the process of shooting your first feature, <clears throat> or any film for that matter, one of the major questions that typically comes up is, what will I need to do this? Well, the truth is, gear is about as subjective a topic as any. You know, one filmmaker may swear by a, a film workflow, while another will insist that digital is the future. And some mil filmmakers simply must have a steady cam, dolly, and a jib. And that's 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 a true fact. I mean, um, I, I can't tell you. Well, no, I can tell you. Um, I don't think, and, and this might actually be a good exercise for me. Maybe maybe we'll do some. Some filmmaking exercises, and and we'll uh, I'll go out there with our cameras, and we'll see what we can do. But I I don't think that I've ever been on a shoot 
for a film of my own that I didn't have a steady cam. You know, there's been a lot of them that have had dollies and lots of them that have jibs, but the the steady cam uh that that to me is a more it's a more elemental more much more needed tool to me, I think, than a dolly or a jib. Don't get me wrong, dollies and jibs are are perfect, uh, you know, when and where they're needed, but I think for the all-around bad boy uh, of camera motion control, um, you know, for me it's got to be Steadicam. Um, You can check out, too, on Facebook our Steadicam group, uh, TMFI's Steadicam New York on Facebook. Just look up TMFI Steadicam New York. Uh, You'll find our, our Steadicam group and... We've got professionals from all over the world, but the good majority around the New York area. And uh, there's a lot of good information there, a lot of good posts, a lot of good how-tos, a lot of good uh, information about uh, new offerings from the company, that kind of thing. So check that out if you're into Steadicam. Um, Over the last 17 years, as I've said, I've spent in commercial production, and a lot has changed in terms of equipment. Uh, A lot more than many of us in the industry care to admit. I believe... The fact of the matter is, a kid with an iPhone 4 motivation and the right technique can shoot an entire feature-length picture. I wouldn't say that it rivals the quality of HD cams, but it certainly rivals the quality of HD cams from the 1990s. Or a group of creatives with a digicam can easily shoot a web series that is seen by millions, skyrocketing them all to stardom on YouTube as is the case with The Guild, for example. All this really means is that creativity and dedication to our craft as filmmakers is more important now than ever before. If you believe in your story and are committed to a diligent pursuit of being better, you'll be surprised at the relatively few resources you actually need compared to even five years ago. Let's see. For the last feature that I was shooting... um, it was a very light tech load using only the equipment that we needed to lend itself to our artistic goals. This means that even though I'm an old school film nut, we'll likely shoot all digital, make use of as much natural light as possible. So what exactly do you need, do you ask? Well, not much is the surprising answer. Uh, I'm going to say sound is by far the most important tech requirement for independent filmmakers. I know, you're all just like, what? Yeah. Um, More important than your camera, I think. But filmmaking is a visual medium, of course. Of course it is. But the format, the picture quality, and all of your creative camera angles aren't nearly as important as having great sound. You can blame poor camera angles on being avant-garde, for example. But if your sound is bad, you're announcing to the world, I'm an amateur. Yes. So, what are the elements of sound? Well, the first thing that you need to consider is a capture device, okay? This is either a digital audio recorder, which I almost always recommend, or if you have a digital camera with audio inputs, you can record sound directly to the camera. It's not recommended, but this is a list of bare minimum stuff, right? Um, A shotgun mic kit. Okay, so this is the shotgun mic the boom and the uh, the universal, you know, little floaty adapter there, the the shock mount. Um, that three-piece kit, you know, even if it's a short boom pull, maybe if it's only got three extension sections to it. The ones that I like to use are five and six uh, segment extensions that can go out to like 35 feet, that kind of thing. I find them the most versatile because, of course, they can compact down right to just about the size of a four-foot boom, but also can extend to, you know, as as long as I need. But that's just me. Uh, I'm saying minimum you would need a a good three-section boom and uh, the mic and the shock mount. Um, I would also recommend two lavalier mics. Now, these are the little tiny mics that clip on the the person's clothing, like uh, on their collar or something. Um, You can hide them under clothing. They're perfect for dialogue between two characters when maybe getting a boom pole in and around a small room is just not going to happen. The next minimum thing I would say you would need is an audio mixer. 
you know, from multiple sound inputs. This will allow you to mix down your sound as it's going into your capture device. So, you know, if you've got two mic'd people on lavalier mics and a third actor on a boom, uh, you can you can capture them all at the same time. Um, and headphones. Yeah, seriously, you need some good ones. And I'm not talking $40 at Amazon compared to $20. I'm talking about a good $150 to $250 uh, noise cancelling is the way you want to go on those. Sound is a critical component of filmmaking, but we do call them pictures after all. The good news is that it's getting easier and easier these days to get quality images when making your movie. Camera. Yes, duh, you're saying. However, this is one of the the hotly debated items in an independent film shoot. You know, the question at the beginning, do I shoot in HD or film or RED or some other format? And what about DSLR? That seems to be hot right now. Well, the truth is, just about any camera will work. You just need something that preferably captures at 24 frames per second in a widescreen aspect ratio. Now, lenses, of course, that is determinant on your camera choice, of course, but if you have one that swaps lenses, okay, at least have one prime 35 millimeter lens. You know, glass really is the difference between cool and sweet, okay? That's why I'm so jazzed about the uh, the Canon line of cinema lenses. Oh, yes, I am. You're going to hear me talking about those an awful lot, gang. <laughs> Yes, you are. Anyway, getting off my little heart on there. Uh, A tripod, people. Yes, tripods. Uh, It's a stand when you need it to be. It's a poor man, risky man's crane, steady cam, dolly when you don't. Um, Handheld is the budget filmmaker's friend. Don't forget that. Um, But a a good video tripod, absolute bare minimum, and lots of sandbags. Now, if you can't afford to spend 18 bucks a piece at B&H for, you know, good quality reusable sandbags, there are certainly DIY and free opportunities out there. I mean, if you just go to YouTube and put in independent filmmaker, um, you're going to come up with all kinds of videos. Uh, there's a bunch of groups out there showing you, you know, the, the cheap and the DIY ways of getting things done on a movie set. Um, and, and sandbags would be one of them. And I, I can't stress enough, have enough sandbags, okay? You, you want to be eating out of these sandbags when you're actually on set, trust me. Apple boxes too, but you don't need those right now. Lighting. Using natural light is preferable because it's free. But the drawback to that is, of course, different geographical areas have different light. Natural light has had a couple of shortfalls. First, it's limited, okay, as in the time that it's there. Second, it really only lends to one look artistically speaking, so having a little help is a good idea. When I say a little help, I'm talking about things like light kits and reflectors and gels. Yes. Now, the light kits, there's some huge options out there. I mean, it's just staggering. I mean, it used to be just... HMIs, PARs, Fresnels, and that's all you need. Now it's the world of LED and LCD and you know me and digital light bulbs and white CFL bulbs and what what the heck do I choose? Well, <clears throat> there are some that are specialized for filmmaking, usually tungsten, but any lighting kit really will do. Light kits come in a bevy of configurations, but all of them will include a key, a fill, and a backlight. Yes, the good old basic photography rule number one for lighting. Have yourself a key light, a fill light, and a backlight. These are handy when you need to supplement the light in natural light like you have or just need a little extra heat in the room. Now, gels, you'll want a bunch of these. You want to buy them in bulk. A good rule of thumb is that you want to capture the image you want rather than trying to adjust it in post. Trust me, I've lost many a clump of hair out of my head Uh, sitting there for 20 hours a day, and I'm not even kidding, for like three weeks straight to make a deadline uh, in post. I I hate editing. It's one of my the banes of my existence. But gels will give you the ability to control the tone of your light and actually can be the difference of a scene feeling like springtime or a nightmare. 
And lastly, but not leastly in lighting, reflectors. Now, it's not something you might think of. You know, you see them when the hot model gets the still photographer shoot going there, and, she's, you know, he's got some doofus standing there in shorts and a water bottle checking out the babe holding his big disc. Well, he's not actually just a horny guy staring at the chickie. He's, he's doing the, the job with the reflector. And, you know, they make a world of difference on your lighting. They really do. These handy things give you the ability to manipulate natural light, remove shadows where you don't want them, and be master of your lighting domain. Here's a little tip. Try a white foam board. I hear it's just as good as the pro stuff. Yes, you heard that from me. And then, of course, when you get all this stuff shot and sounding great and all captured and everything else, you've you've got to put it together with your, your storyboard and go into post-production, don't you? Ugh, yes. Again, my favorite kind of thing, post-production. Oh, not... Well, all you really need is a computer and some editing software. Final Cut Studio is a great one, though Adobe has a a fantastic offering as well in Adobe Premiere. And the ubiquitous After Effects. Now, in a pinch, iMovie or Windows Movie Maker can do the trick. It, It sucks, it really does, but it's just laying one shot down after another, right? <laughs> yeah, you guys have fun with that one. Uh, anything else miscellaneous? Well, I can't stress the sandbags enough again. Let's let's hit the old sandbags again. Yes. Uh, C47s, otherwise known as clothespins. Yes, really. That's all it is, and you'll want to get a lot of them. Um, well, I guess the other horrific thing I would have to tell you is gaffer's tape. Yeah. <sighs> And you're going to be like, oh, okay, gaffer's tape, so what? You can go down and buy some. Yeah, well, when you go down and see their 20 bucks a freaking roll, um, then you'll be like, uh, Chris, what up? This is 20 bucks a roll. <laughs> yeah, yes, it is. While duct tape might fix everything in the real world, in filmmaking, it just makes a sticky mess. Gaffer's tape fixes it all, and you want a lot of this. Trust me, Uh, as a a man who's spent sometimes days picking duct tape residue off of light poles and C-stands and, yeah. We we, we just don't really want to relive all that stuff, do we, Chris? No. Okay, so, yeah, get gaffer's tape, and yes, it can be 20 bucks a roll. You can get some good deals at B&H or Adorama in New York, or I'm sure... Any one of the, the tape suppliers that, that are at a store near you, um, you can you can check them out. They, they do have them on sale. I mean, I've gotten bulk deals uh, where I've paid 9 or $10 a roll. I've also got some other not-so-great deals, you know, when I only needed like 8 or 10 rolls, and, you know, I picked them up for like 12 to 14 Not as bad as 20 or 25 a piece, and it gets the job done. But, yeah, gaffer's tape, guys. Not electricians, not not duct tape. Don't try and don't try and change this up on me. I'm trying to help you. Well, the good news is technology is getting to be so affordable that you can pick most of this stuff up on the cheap. Also, there are poor man versions of just about everything other than cameras and microphones. Just trip around Google and yield it will yield you many results in that regard. Also, don't be afraid to check out Amazon. Uh, there are some scary Wu Sung kind of companies out there, but you still can if you follow the customer reviews and not just by the one or two planted there, but by 40 or 50, uh, four and a half, five star ratings, you can come away with some pretty good deals and some pretty good gear. Um, for a really good list of packaged gear, um, I, I would definitely highly recommend, again, B&H Photo in New York City. Um, and they do ship and sell online, so you can you know still purchase from them. Um, that they do have some really nice gear deals. Um, Yeah, I love them. Have I said that? I love (laughs) B&H. Yes. Well, also, if you've... uh, Well, actually, I'm going to go for a break, and when I come back, I'll give you more goodies. Be right back, gang. I hate flying. The lines, the crowds, the delays... Six hours. 
one seat nobody can get to you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard our non-stop service from New York to London. You fly much? All the time, actually. someone every 20 minutes unless 150 million dollars is transferred to this account number we're midway across the atlantic how do you kill someone in a crowded plane and get away with it ladies and gentlemen we need every passenger to raise their hands above their head this is a bad idea we have a right to know what the hell is going Agent Marks, the account number you gave us is in your name. What? That doesn't make any sense. This is a setup. Something else is going on. You are listening to HTLA Radio 1, and this is Film 101, with your host, Christopher John Taylor. Oh, yes. And our first segment, <clears throat> excuse me, we just kind of went over the basic kit you need, you know, the DSLR camera, that'll work, good tripod, that'd be nice, good lighting, <clears throat> three-point lighting kit, always, reflectors, Good shotgun microphone with at least three sections of boom pole. And oh, audio XLR cables too. Um, the reason I mention this is most of the boom poles that I've ever used and seen, they have a very short extension on the end of the pole. Because, of course, the rest of the cable is inside the pole and it's meant to extend as far as the pole can go. So, usually, you don't have a lot of lead uh, on the back end of your boom pole. So you might want to invest in, you know, I would say at least a 20-footer um, to run back to your recorder. Yeah. Also, wireless microphones, lavalier mics, uh, definitely worth the investment. You can get some good sets uh, for not too much money. And, of course, that good portable digital audio recorder again, very much of the important factor a good set of noise cancelling uh, monitors headphones yes reflectors 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 and uh, the lenses yes good glass another few things that I didn't mention that could actually help too if you have a couple extra bucks is extra batteries mm. mm-hmm. I can't uh... nope I can't stress enough how much you need the batteries. Um, but if you don't have too much consumption, you're probably okay. Uh, but I, I would at least recommend one or two extra batteries for the camera and definitely one extra for the audio recorder. Make sure also you get some good quality flash memory cards. Uh, you know, if you're shooting on CF through your digital SLR, uh, if you're shooting on... Uh, SDHCs for your, well, some of the camcorders too, but uh, more over your audio recorder. You know, get get some decent quality stuff. Get some Transcend or get some uh, SanDisk, you know, some good name brand stuff. Lexar is another good brand, but uh, stay away from those kind of unknown Wu Sung kind of 
kind of brands out there for that. And if you have an external hard drive, it's always handy to dump down your, your data and at least have a backup copy as you go. Um, yeah, that, that pretty much sums it up, I, I guess. Yeah. Uh, one little side note I will make is that if you're looking for something that's, you know, a good documentary camera or a good camera for um, just kind of running gun stuff, uh, that that will kind of work in with, with a good majority of workflows and is professional grade, I would definitely look at considering the Canon XF305. And I, I'm a Canon nut, but I'm in no way, you know, paid by Canon to, to try and sell you on Canon gear, trust me. Uh, it's just, for the price point, uh, one of the best cameras out there you can get for your, your everyday kind of stuff. Now, you know, don't get me wrong, it is, you know, 4500 bucks. But it depends on what you're going to be shooting. You know, if you're a 4K nut and you just want to have that Blackmagic 4K, then get the Blackmagic 4K. Um, you know, we're talking about doing it on the cheap. We're talking about doing it on a DSLR anyway. Um, but I'm just saying to any of you guys with a little bit bigger budget out there that might be more into doing documentaries and stuff for television, the XF305, in my opinion, is definitely the way to go. Still with the 422 color sampling, still with XLR ports, uh, four inch rotating LCD monitor, pretty much anywhere you need it. It's just, to me, it's the right choice in this day and age for that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, so that's what we covered in the first segment, and that's that's pretty much the the quick breakdown, the quick and dirty as it is. Um, now let's talk about maybe a kit and a crew. Yes, yes, those crew, those. Those other guys that are standing around looking like they're doing nothing and costing you an arm and a leg. Yes, those are the crew. One of the biggest problems for first-time filmmakers <clears throat> and what they face is the is that of planning for and providing the right sources for all the, the all-important shoot. You know, you've got your script, you found someone to write it for you, you found a cast, because... <clears throat> You probably don't know the first thing about casting, <laughs> which I really should cover in the next couple of episodes, seriously. Um, and you've arranged a day or a series of days in which to shoot your blockbuster. Huh? And you've raised a small budget that will allow you to make the film <clears throat> Excuse me, without also serving up a significant dent to your personal bank account. Yeah. But now what? You know? Part of your budget will be put down to equipment costs, of course, either renting or purchasing the hardware needed to turn the inputs of light and sound into a movie. There's a bewildering array of equipment available in both amateur and pro film markets to hire or buy, and choosing the right kit for your shoot can be very stressful, very confusing, and when done wrong, a disaster for both your film and your budget. Just as important is your crew. Filming will pr prove uh, just as slow and frustrating with an overload of extraneous team members as it will be if there are too few to keep the ball rolling. And this is very important. This is why I've I've there's a blog post up there about choosing the right DP. Yes, the director of photography or cinematographer. Yes, um, choosing the right DP. You know, if you if you're if you're not just doing some Mickey Mouse home thing and you you actually you know really have you know cares for your look of your film you're, you're going to want to get a good dp and when i say good i'm not really technically saying he's good in his technical abilities that might come into play too depends on what you're looking for but if you're new to this and you you're, you're not in with any network of filmmakers you, you're not going to have a dp in your back pocket there are no shortcuts here and well, you don't have time, money, or the inclination to go to DP school, do you? So, you need to find one. And the first, the first thing you got to do to find one is, of course, you know, put it out on the internet or put it out <clears throat> in your local papers or go to your local film club and, uh, you know, put the word out you're looking for a DP for this job. Uh, any of these resources will, you know, lead you to having some DPs contact you if they're interested in your incredible financial offer or free. 
Um, and what they will likely do is send you a reel, okay? Now, this is a compilation of their work, usually edited down into about two minutes of a quick, ooh, look what I can do. And you can look at all these different things, and a lot of cinematographers and DPs have their own special look, okay? It's like a lot of directors you can pretty much identify just watching their films. Michael Bay, need I say more? Um, <clears throat> so if, if you're doing a horror movie, you might want to try and find yourself a DP that's done them before, and is actually showing you something in the reel that looks good. Looks like something you kind of want yours to look like. Huh? Yeah, that'll be a, a good first step <coughs> in making your epic uh, much more epic. Yes. Now, I'm going to give you a guide. You can. Uh, this is recorded, so you can come back and listen to me anytime if you get confused. Uh, it's going to take you through three levels of equipment and crew that should be present on your film set, starting with the very, very basic needs of what essentially a no-budget shoot would have, and we'll progress up until we have the makings of a professional indie film setup. We've even include handy. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna include. Sorry, <clears throat> I can't read or speak tonight. Uh, we're gonna include a, a handy set of links for you. Um, somewhere. Where the hell are we? Oh yes, links to Amazon where you can find some of the coolest and most useful pieces of kit and gadgets. Remember I said before the break, Amazon was a good resource for a lot of that stuff, so I'll give you some examples there. And one thing this guide won't account for really are the pre- and post-production costs, such as ADR, color correction, editing, which should always be taken into account in your budget, yes. Um, I'm also going to ignore the, the salaries of the casting crew, in time-honored independent film fashion, everyone on these fictional shoots of mine is working for free, right? And they love it. And they love you, the master director. It's not ideal. You definitely want to be paying people to keep this industry alive, but it's where many of us start out. Plus, paying people is too good for you, right? Yeah. Well, it's the old saying, gang. Pay peanuts, you get monkeys. Uh-huh. Trust me. Now, a word of warning... As with most how-to, uh, well, podcasts, articles, um, th this is as much an opinion as it is a guide. So please treat it as such, okay? So <clears throat> let's get to part one here. You have no money. Nothing. Not even a little bit. Well, okay, a little bit. Uh, as far as your visuals go, again, mid-range DSLR camera. You know, most shoot up to 1080p. We'll go to 6400 ISO, are comparatively really cheap and can double up as useful still cameras. Yeah. Proper digital storage for your film. Yes, it's amazing how few people think of this until the first day of the shoot when the camera stops recording after 20 seconds. They get multiple Class 10 or SD cards with respectable amounts of memory. 16 gigs at least, please. Better still, opt for a portable hard drive that will plug into your camera. Now, not all cameras allow you to do this, but a good chunk of them do, especially Canon. <laughs> did I say Canon again? I did. Um, that prime lens I mentioned in the first section, uh, you know, do it properly. Zooming in is, is kind of sinful. So stop being lazy and move the camera closer instead. Go for something like a 50 mil, which sees more or less a similar view to what the human eye sees. So it's relatable and it's good for all sorts of shots. And I would say probably the vast majority of what you might be shooting. A good 35 would be handy too, but it's not a perfect world. In my perfect world, that three-piece set from Canon. <laughs> yes, the, the 24, the 50, and the 85. Those are my, my three holy trinity right there. That's, that's, what I, that's my go-to. That's what I'm calling it. All right. A tripod. Essential for steadying your shots, whether you have space or not. Um, definitely a fluid head. That's why I'm recommending a video tripod over, you know, just a still shoot kind of camera friction head tripod because it'll show up in your pans. It'll show up in your in your cranes. It'll show up in all your camera movements that you're going to try and do with this thing. If it's a friction head, it's going to be jerky and floppy and look really stupid. 
fluid heads are expensive, but you can get really good cost-effective fluid heads um, that do the job remarkably well. Uh, look at some of the entry-level uh, starter kits at B&H. Trust me, 145 bucks, I think. You can get yourself a, a really good set of sticks and a really nice fluid head that's going to give you the pans and stuff you want. It's not going to break the bank. You can you can actually use it again for you know your your sequel, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, um, bounce boards, even homemade, you know, or a DIY lighting kit. You know, bounce boards are spectacularly simple to make. You know, they can be wood, plastic frame with an okay, opaque white surface stretched across it. Um, a DIY lighting kit similarly can consist of nothing more than a few house lamps but the important thing is being able to have the choice to use it not being stuck with whatever nature throws at you again that natural light thing we were talking about uh and again back to audio you know the directional microphone also known as a shotgun mic uh this piece of equipment really could save your entire film if used correctly Getting the sound capture right is one of the most important aspects of filmmaking. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm underscoring. Screak, screak, screak. Um, additional microphone equipment. This means, you know, that XLR cable I was talking about and various adapters. DSLRs don't take XLR plugins. So you'll either need to find an adapter for your camera's microphone input, normally a mini jack, um, beach tech company from Kelowna, British Columbia in Canada, Beach Tech. Uh, you can check out their stuff at B&H. They've got some cool little bolt-ons to the bottom of your camera XLR inputs that are really sweet and really cheap. But the quality of the uh, components that they use is really high grade, and that's what I would recommend. That's what I would get. Yeah. Now, lastly, there is a vital component of any film set that is scientifically proven to make the final product look more smooth and professional. A dolly. Duh. Now, granted, dollies and track kits are expensive as all heck. Oh, yes, they are. You know, even to rent. But who says you need to rent or buy one? As with the lighting kit, you know, it's fairly easy to achieve a smooth tracking shot using stuff you pick up here and there for free. Anything with wheels, a bicycle, skateboard, wheelchair, they can be used, so long as the surface that it's rolling on is nice and flat. Have you seen the Pico Dolly? It's a genius, cheap solution to all your smooth shot needs. I would suggest you look it up on the Weeb. You can even try something without wheels. Um, somebody I knew once achieved one of his favorite ever shots by dragging a camera on a leather jacket across a marble floor. Again, it's the surface, I think, more than the wheels. Yeah. So, again, minimum crew, you're going to want a director, a cameraman, a DOP. A dazzling multitask role, but folding the director's job in with the cinematographers and the camera operators is a good way of keeping the amount of people on the set down, as well as your budget. And, you know, if you weren't successful in getting a DP, you've got to be one don't you? It also allows the artistic vision that you have and the decisions to stay with that one person, you, making things simpler on your first shoot. Now, I've done this before, personally, and I absolutely 100% can say, will say that you can direct, be your own cameraman, and be your own DOP. It's not going to look as good, but you can. Now, the producer in many small-scale production, productions, especially if the film is being shot is a short, they'll combine the director and producer into one role. Although this is possible, you'll probably find that on that day organizing the actors, equipment, and locations, it's extremely overwhelming. Let the producer worry about the organization, you worry about the film. And besides, you don't have a budget for a line manager, do you? No. Sound Lighting General Handyman. Now, while the director and producer are busy with the artistic vision and organization of the shoot, this member of the team will provide vital support by acting as a runner, a boom mic operator, backup cameraman, script supervisor, and gaffer, and all those other myriad of jobs that make movie making possible. Actors, I wouldn't recommend any more than five. 
As aforementioned, it is important that you keep the number of unnecessary people on your set to a minimum. For your very first project, pick or write a script with few as few characters as possible. Remember, being an actor on set is mostly a boring, irritating experience, especially when you're not being paid or fed. So reduce the amount of people that you're going to be looking after for a more relaxed experience. Okay? That's highly recommended. Yes. So we'll, I guess, uh, leave that there, and and, uh, we'll head off for uh, another commercial break. When we come back, oh, look, I found some money. Yes, we'll get into your kit with, you know, the assumption that you found a couple of grand, and yeah, you can you can do it with some, some money now. We'll be right back in two minutes, gang, and we'll uh, close this up. Lifts to clear obstacles. Lowers to cut drag. Rises to every challenge. The class-exclusive air suspension in the new 2013 Ram 1500. Engineered to move heaven and earth. Guts. Glory. Ram. What can I get you all today? Sea salt and vinegar? Smart pop butter? I'll take caramel with a side of white cheddar. And for you, sweetie. The special? Lime and salt it is. You guys ever get tired of just eating popcorn? Because I know I never would. Awkward. Discover all 18 flavors of Waffle Redenbacher's Gourmet Popcorn. Simply made, passionately created. Have I got a treat for you. New clean whipped cream foundation from CoverGirl. A delicious new recipe whipped up by Clean Makeup. They took their clean, fresh foundation, added a dash of hydration, then whipped it to smooth, matte perfection. Finally, a non-drying whip that wears like a dream. What a treat from Clean. New clean whipped cream from easy, breezy, beautiful CoverGirl. Just Dance 2014. Stay in, go all out. HTLA Radio 1. Yes, HTLA Radio 1. Uh, damn Borg. When you least expect it, that's when they pop up. Good evening and welcome to Film 101. I am the host of Film 101, Christopher John Taylor, and you are listening to me through the joyous on-air beats of HTLA Radio 1 in New York City, where right now in Central Park it's now 21 degrees. Hmm, yes. And oh look, I found some money in Central Park. Yes, I did. So now we can kind of maybe upgrade our kid a little more. Eh? Maybe? Well, at the very least, you'll be able to get some of those extras I was talking about, like, you know, that portable hard drive compatible with your camera's memory output. Um, A monitor would be sexy. You know, one of the biggest things, aside from the sound of your film, is, of course, what it looks like. And I cannot tell you in my years of agenting films for acquisition to be distributed, have I seen submissions where just about, except for maybe one or two shots, the entire thing does not have critical focus. This is a huge problem with a lot of people working on three and four inch LCD screens. What looks like critical focus on a three inch screen, yeah, when you when you get home and you plug it into your computer and throw it up on your 42 inch you're like what the hell is that you know the whole thing is out of focus and and i'm not kidding this happens all the time so critical focus to me is is like the second most important thing and of course if i'm my own dop i've got nobody to blame but me 
oh, and I'm the camera guy, so I got nobody to blame but me. And I'm the director, and I got nobody to blame but me. See, and I don't like that. I don't like it all being my fault. Screw that. So, I would say a monitor. <clears throat> you know, just a bigger screen linked to your camera so you can watch what's being filmed live without having to crane into the viewfinder, especially if you're working on the C100. Good luck. The Canon C100, that little nipple that they call a viewfinder, is completely useless in my opinion. But, yeah. So it, it's useful if you're not shooting yourself and very cheap and easy to set up and find. Remember, you'll have to get the right cables too. Yes. Um, one of the neat things that I like is working with, uh, you know, the, the Samurai. Because, of course, that's got a nice little 7, 6, 7-inch seven screen on it. You know, the Ninja 2s, uh, those are good. Uh, definitely the Odyssey 7. Oh. Yeah, 4K recorders, man. It's, it's like sex. You know, it's better than sex. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, you can look at maybe a high-range DSLR, right? Or a low-range film camera. You know, if you've got a bit of money to spare, you can go for higher quality. Look at buying or renting a camera exclusively for film, such as a C300 or that Black Magic. Something that'll give you that 4K resolution. If you're doing it just for TV, who cares? You can sample it down. But 4K, it's 4K, baby. Definitely. So, yeah, monitor, critical focus, big thing. Make sure you uh, look into it if you got a bit of buck. Um, I, I would say definitely, then, 50mm prime lens. Your main, most useful lens, appropriate for all sorts of styles and shots. A telephoto... If you can manage it, you know, the most popular focal length is the 70 to 200 millimeter lens. This lens will essentially allow you to become a bit more experimental with camera placement, such as with outdoor shots and flattening the background. A small professional lighting kit featuring at least one bounce board and a couple of fill lights. A pick or two, gels of course, you can never go wrong with getting more gels. Uh, and stands, C-stands. C-stands are good. And not just some crappy lighting stand from somebody's old basement, you know, photography studio. No, 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 no. C stands. Look them up. B and H photo. Type in C stands. Hit search. Good. Um, tripod. Throw more money into the tripod. Absolutely. And now I'm going to get into the rigs. Yes. Think about this. A shoulder rig. Since you have the budget, invest in a good piece of equipment for shooting on the move. You're still not quite in steady cam territory, money wise, but a fig rig or ent entry level counterweight system should be in your price range and very useful. I would definitely look to a company like Zicudo for these, this kind of rig. Um, everybody would like to get Red Rock Micro, but all their stuff is blue and. <laughs> Well, except their Black Series, but that's even more money. Red Rock Micro is really, really overpriced for what they give you, I think. But that's just me. Uh, but Zacuto, good quality, good prices, and the stuff is rock solid. It'll last you 20 years. Easy. Um, for your audio, definitely shotgun boom with all the extension cables, adapters, and the boom. If you can afford a, a four or a five section, get it because it gives you more versatility of placement. And that external sound recorder. Yes, with a higher budget, you can begin to look at different ways of miking actors up. Although none should be used as a permanent alternative to a good shotgun microphone, body mics and ambient mics are useful for capturing intimate sound in difficult scenes. Or the general oral atmosphere of a location. The external device is always preferable to connecting the microphone directly to the camera, as it will provide much better sound quality and be, can be carried around by the sound man. It avoids cable mix-up and difficult setups and people tripping and falling and suing you and all kinds of nasty stuff. So, uh, again, now you've taken a step up the budget ladder, we can begin to look at more professional stuff to, you know, certain problems. As opposed to a skateboard or a coat being dragged across the floor, now you can afford to hire a small but still professional track and dolly kit. This should come with proper fitting for a tripod and even a tripod of its own. What the hell? Uh, a set of tracks, 
and well-made rollers so that the camera movement is as smooth as possible. The massive advantage of having a track is the ability to lay it down on practically any surface and still achieve fluid motion. And another little trick, well, ooh, another little trick, sorry, while we're talking about <coughs> the motion of your camera on track, shims. Yes, like little door stoppers, little, little thin shims of wood to, you know, level that up and, you know, even out that roll. Is, trust me, <laughs> even on on what seems to be an even floor, it's not an even floor. Never trust the floor. So, now we go to your crew. Yes, you can have a crew now. More than the free poor SOBs you were working before, now we got a little bit of money. So, get that DOP. Get them. Trust me. Um... So there's you and the DOP, and then there's the producer, still tasked with organizing the set of the day of the shoot, as well as their other pre- and post-production responsibilities. A camera operator, a second DOP if you can get one, a lighting technician, yes. Make sure you find someone who knows about photography, camera placement, etc., not only will they be much more easier to work with than someone new to the game, but they will probably come up with ideas on set that you hadn't previously considered. And this has happened to me too, where you may have it in your mind that this particular scene, you're shooting from five different angles. That second opinion can save you a couple of angles, throw in a dolly push, or some other kind of innovative shot you hadn't even thought of, and even save you some time, and ultimately give you a better scene. Yes, so think about that. Your sound technician. I would suggest highly an experienced sound technician, proficient at both sound capture and boom placement. This will make all the difference to your movie's soundtrack's quality. And, like I said before, the most, in thing is, the most important thing is, sound good. Two, critical focus. There you go. Uh, general set handyman runner. Yes, yeah, someone needs to push that dolly and carry the bags around as well as take everyone else's job when they're too busy. And again, I wouldn't recommend any actors on this size of a, a crew of more than five. Okay. Now let's look at the quick scenario of take my money, I don't want it. Yeah, so somehow through begging, borrowing, stealing, maybe Indiegogo was good to you, depriving your parents of their retirement fund, or you know, yourself of food for a few months or years and college and all that good stuff, you've managed to raise a respectable budget for a respectable film shoot. Now, at this point, you get to become more experimental with your script, your directorial choices, doors which were previously closed, i.e. steady cam technology. Ooh, cranes. Ooh, we could do cranes. Scenes in difficult or faraway locations are suddenly opened. Yes, we can go to the desert of Saudi Arabia. Yes. Well, okay, that's a little exotic, but you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Mm hmm. Well, now let's talk about the kit. This is the fun part. Visuals. Hey, how about two of those C300 cameras, huh? Or, or maybe an, a red? Ooh. Or, or my, my favorite girlfriend, the Ari Alexa. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or maybe even, hey, a, here, what about this for an idea? A combination of a pro film camera and a high-range DSLR. Ooh, you could do it all slumdog millionaire style, huh? Are you feeling me? I'm feeling me. Well, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm on the air. Anyway, uh, hey, two external hard drives, huh? Yeah? You got a, a fail-safe. You can back up on the go, Joe. A full set of prime lenses. Now, if money's no object, you can go right from that, you know little three-piece Canon kit I was telling you about, you know, the 24, the 50, and the 85 mil, you could start to play with Canon's higher-end cinema primes. You could. Uh, or you could go right to Cook. Ooh. Cook or Carl Zeiss CP2s. There's, there's six, five- and six-piece kits from 11 millimeters through 200 millimeters or so. This covers practically the entire range and will give your DOP a great set of options to play with. Oh, yeah. 
Although, if you're planning on using a zoom function for a trick shot, such as a contra zoom, you'll need to source yourself a zoom lens. Mm. Now, tripods, monopods, tracks, a dolly, you can get all more of now, of course. You have money. If you're feeling really adventurous, you can get a jib or a crane. And man, I gotta tell you, I'm gonna stop the boat right here for a second and tell you, Cinevate. Yes, C-I-N-E-V-A-T-E dot com. They're Canadian, but trust me, the best freaking jib. Oh, it is so hot. And it's cheap, too. And money's no object now, right? So, yeah, have fun with that one. Yes, yes. Oh, well, screw it. Just get a 20K and a crane and turn night into day. There you go. <laughs> um, so make sure you've got your monopods, tracks, dolly, everything. Just beef that up big time. And, of course, now you can afford those $18 a piece real canvas sandbags. Yeah. All the girls be checking you out. Ooh, he's got real sandbags. A couple of handheld systems, guys. Hey, who's going to do those, uh, you know, DVD special featurettes, right? Get a couple of handheld cameras, good HD quality, you know. Again, hey, Canon XF305 is a perfect behind-the-scenes camera. Depending on the script, you might need to have some camera movement that cannot be done on tracks. To do this, you can use a variety of handheld camera systems, from the very cheap and rudimentary fig rig to the very expensive, very complicated study cam. Yes, which often come with their own operators, by the by. Yes, they do. Professional lighting kits, huh? With floods and spots, general lighting effects, picks for highlighting, gels and stands, get the right colors and angles. Before you buy, however, have a chat with your DOP and see what they suggest for the, the shots you've outlined in your, your shoot list there. Audio. Yes, we go back to that all-important audio once again. Two shotgun mics, guys, with cables, booms, and external recorders, each separate. Time code. Yes, time code is your friend. And what the hell? One ambient mic with cables, stand, external recorder. You know, throw it on a boom if you want. You've got all the money in the world, right? Yes. Once more, depending on that script, body mics are mostly used in shots too wide for a microphone on a boom and come with their own set of issues, namely the excess noise that's caused by the microphone rubbing on clothing, which can really suck. A good idea would be to speak to your sound engineer and see what they need, although the above will do for most shoots, they might need a specialist piece of equipment you haven't heard of before or don't think to include in the initial list, so make sure you check that up. Now your crew. Your crew can expand now. You can just be the director and be purely responsible for that artistic direction of the shoot, huh? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't that be nice? I think they call that a luxury. Now you can also afford an assistant director. This person will be in charge of the people on your set. And since you're in charge of the crew, who will be busy most of the time, this means that they're in charge of organizing the actors. Although we say in charge, an old phrase about herding cats comes to mind. So be nice to the AD, for they have a horrible job. And I'm going to have some on my show next week and the week after. Yes, because they did ADs too. Yes, you, you work yourself up here, gang. The producer. The higher the budget, the more everyone's responsibilities start looking like what they're supposed to be. In this shoot, the producer will be responsible for organizing and scheduling locations, crew, and equipment, but has some minions, such as the AD and the handyman, to help him out. The producer should also be responsible for making sure none of the kid gets damaged or lost. Yes. Those bastard producers. Camera operator DOP. Mm-hmm. Now... Up in this pay grade, one of the most common pieces of advice for first-time feature filmmakers is to hire the proper director of photography. They need to be trained, and they need to have experience working on film sets before, and preferably sets that are the same genre as the film you're working on. You can still direct the camera from the monitor. This sounds needy, but their expertise will make the whole process seem a lot easier and more creative. A sound engineer. Yes. Yes, I can pay one now. Preferably someone experienced in working in sound recording with good microphone placement knowledge and a good ear. They do not have to consistently operate the boom themselves, but do have to pay close attention to the type of quality of sound being captured. There are many sound engineers with skills to do the job working in the theater who rarely get a chance to be at a film set, hint, hint, 
So widen the breadth of your search to include the outside the film world. Yes. Lighting technician and gaffer. You can afford one now. Again, you're better off erring on the side of experience and hiring someone who has worked the lighting systems before. And again, this tends to be a domain in which theater technicians uh, can be extremely creative and experienced pool of talent. Many DOPs, however, will also know or be used to working with their own lighting technicians, so ask them too. And trust me, if you're working on a set for more than a couple of days, you're going to want people who work well together. Huge importance. Ah, runners, those precious little minions. You'll probably have no problem finding some people to do this for free, but bear in mind that on your shoot, their duties will be more than just fetching tea. They will be assisting not only the producer, but also the lighting tech and the sound engineer. The DOPs, the actors, and of course you, not to mention carrying all the kit and pushing the dolly and laying out the tracks and tidying the set and keeping the equipment safe. Are you getting me? Are you feeling me? Yeah. Well, uh, let's see. What else we got here? What else? Uh, Well, I think we're down to actors. Clearly, the amount of actors you have on the set will depend on the amount of actors featured in the script, but with a higher budget, you can afford to take on films with multiple speaking parts. As you have your AD to look after the actors between takes, there's one filmmaking postscript that needs to be addressed and is directed to all three levels of filmmaking that I have noted tonight, as well as practically every other level of filmmaking there is. In any shoot, there are two vital components that will make your life as a filmmaker easier by several thousand degrees. First is a place to store and transport your gear, preferably at the same time. This means either a van or a truck. The second is a ready supply of electricity. As you might remember, nearly everything on the film set does need those little blue sparks to function, from microphones to the camera you... Yeah, batteries, batteries, batteries. Bring along a generator. You get all the money in the world. Oh, also this one last thing. I hope I've cut out and kept what you haven't run out of glue or scissor metal. Yes. It's an old film thing. We'll catch you next week. I'm out of here. Film 101.